Hi, I am Spencer Brandt, and I'm here with Split the Party, filling in for your regularly scheduled host, Steve Osmond. Today we are talking DC Comics, and I'm here with my guest, Nick Van Haver and Derek Draven. Uh, DC Comics has been around since 1930s, 1940s kind of thing, so they have a extent, or massive history. Um, but it really kicked off uh, with a lot of different storylines back in 1985 with DC Comics storyline Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, a lot of it was it was the game changer back in the day. Yeah, lots of big stuff happened in that one. Um, Barry Allen sacrificing himself, uh, death of Supergirl, Animal Man got completely wiped out from existence, yeah. all because of the Anti Monitor. Um, so basically, then DC smashed all their worlds together to just simplify everything. Simplify, yeah. Um, which we didn't really see any of those worlds again for nearly 20 years, actually. Up until Booster Gold decided to poke around and found that all of those worlds that we thought were gone were still here, just on the outer limits of the, the multiverse. Yeah, which then we lead into we uh, roughly 2005, so six years of kind of poking around leads into Flashpoint. Leads into Flashpoint. A decision from Barry Allen to go back to, in time to save his mother leads to a completely different world, one where his mother is still alive, but he's no longer the Flash, and everyone else has to deal with the ramifications of a world without the Flash. Yep, Barry Allen is completely just a normal guy. On the other hand, um, in the alley that night, uh, it was Bruce Wayne that was killed. Uh, Thomas becomes Batman, and Martha becomes Joker, so that's a huge different take oh, on, on Batman, for and sure. Every character has yeah. just back and forth kind of different things, like Cyborg's the leader of the Justice League. <laughs> yep, Cyborg's the leader of the Justice League. Um, and I love Flashpoint, all that stuff, except for the end of Flashpoint, where they have Aquaman get his tail handed to him by Wonder Woman. She just beats him like a red-headed stepchild for no reason, which, <laughs> hands down, he'd be able to take her in a fight, no problem. But the important thing coming out of the end of Flashpoint is Barry decides that the, the world is more important than himself. himself. Yep. So he goes back and he stops himself from saving his mother. Enter in the New 52. Which is kind of lost a lot of readers because a lot of readers felt, why do I want to read from here on in? You know, with all the storylines that I know of aren't necessarily canon. Well, DC never actually said they weren't canon anymore. They were just focusing on the New 52, which was the main universe as well as Earth 2. And they did that for a while until the big storyline of Trinity War, which saw Justice League of America, Justice League, and Justice League Dark all fighting for this item that Pandora had. Which was, well, obviously, Pandora's box. Yes. Uh, Pandora's, which was kind of, a, as a comic fan, Trinity War kind of irked me a little bit because it was this huge tease crossover event and it doesn't really end. And at the end of it, you, you say it, it doesn't end. It, it's a pre-big story going into the big story of Forever Evil because out of Pandora's box comes the Earth-3 crime syndicate. Mm -hmm. And before this, we have only seen the prime Earth for New 52 and then Earth-2 and there was a few books out for Earth 2 showing the difference between them. But up until then, there was just two. Once Crime Syndicate showed up, you got to see that there was an Earth 3. And at the end of Forever Evil, the Crime Syndicate is defeated. The good guys win. But at the end of it, you see that the guy who destroyed Earth 3's world, the reason that they came to the Prime Earth in the first place, was not Darkseid, which everyone thought, but was actually the Anti-Monitor. Which leads directly um, the current storyline that's been running for about a year is New 52 Future's End. It's a weekly series and it's been a fantastic read so far. Um, took a little while to really get the ball rolling. I mean, it was really good and really interesting seeing all your characters, you know, five years in the future kind of thing. Uh, Batman Beyond being included into the mainstream DC universe is like, you know, my fan heaven kind of thing. Um, but just recently, well, not just recently, uh, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, two weeks. Uh, something massive happened. Yep, uh, it was the end, <coughs> uh, and something very strange happened. Uh, Hawkman saw a strange glow, decided to fly into it, um, saw every past version of himself, and then what looks like he was just completely erased from existence. So he gets erased from existence. Brainiac comes down, sets Metropolis in this ball this this field per se and he takes all of metropolis and he lifts it 
out of the earth. He's going to take this and he's going to remove it from this current continuity. He's going to put it in a bottle just like he did with Candor. Yeah. Um, then we have the Adam. Adam also kind of looked like he got killed and then it turns out he was actually, you've got Brainiac down on earth and he's massive, looks like the size of a skyscraper, just wreaking havoc left and right, like you said, takes Metropolis. Well, he's got his floating fortress up in the sky, which is the size of a moon with his little face on and everything. Adam actually goes up inside of this, this moon base and in there he sees almost like a digitized record of not just the new 52, but he sees like Batman year one, his origin. He sees Superman Red Sun, which is the Elseworld storyline where uh, Kal-El, Superman, landed in Soviet Russia instead of, you know, what is it, Smallville, Kansas? Yeah. So that's the massive storyline in itself. Then it just sees everything that we've ever loved about comics, just about all in the memory bank of Brainiac, which is leading us to Convergence. Yes. And, and why is, is Brainiac keeping all of these worlds? What's his, what's his end game is what we're going to find out in Convergence. Mm -hmm. What we do know is that he smashes people from different universes completely together, from different stories, else worlds and, and that. We see one where Supergirl, I'm sorry, where Batgirl, Stephanie Brown Batgirl, mm -hmm. is deciding whether or not she wants to continue to wear the cowl. And as she decides maybe it's time to, to put it up, we see Flashpoint's Catwoman and Gorilla Grodd come in and attack the city. Now, she's got to put her cowl back on, and she needs Red Rub and Cassandra Kane to help her. Which is just uh, a massive thing because it's kind of the, the teaser evidence that what Adam saw in the, the Brainiac Fortress isn't just a memory of it. All of this still exists, so we're getting a lot of uh, fan-favorite characters coming back, right? Yep. <clears throat> exactly. We're getting uh, Wally West back for the first time in seven or eight years. He's back with his kids, his family, and what appears they're fighting for the universe to save the entire universe. Like every good Flash should. And exactly. speaking of things coming back, the best romance in DC Comics, in my opinion, is coming back in the form of Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon in the wheelchair, Barbara Gordon, as Oracle. we see in the cover, the Oracle. And as their romance is, is blooming and they're finally rekindling, Flashpoint Hawkman comes in and decides that he needs to execute them. Why is he going to execute them? In Flashpoint, we see that he's just a, a hired gun for Wonder Woman. And so you wonder who's really the one pulling the trigger on this, uh, this current Hawkman. On your favorite relationship. Yes. And I know you're just as excited for me because Green Arrow. I mean, yep. come on. Oliver Queen is back, the true Oliver Queen. Uh, we also get to see the debut of his son, Connor Hawk, again as well, which I'm just ecstatic for. More archers is always a good thing. Exactly. So, Convergence, uh, eight-week event, putting the rest of the DC Universe on hold just so that fans like us can buy everything we want to buy of the new event without having to just go bankrupt. Yeah. All five of the core Convergence titles, as well as the 42-issue miniseries for a s for separate Convergence titles. Yeah. So at the end of it, though, they did announce that they are going to not necessarily drop new issue ones, but there is going to be a lot of new comics coming out. Like my like I mentioned, Batman Beyond earlier. There's going to be a actual DC Universe Batman Beyond comic on the shelves, whether he's in the future normal Batman Beyond Universe, whether he's back hanging out with Nightwing when he's, Nightwing's a teenager, we don't know. So what do you guys want to see coming up from the DC Universe? Everything. Just as much as they can throw out. Just keep the pace they're going on, keep the great storylines, because in my opinion, um, they're not failing anywhere. I think we need to see a, a continuation of, of a character boom. We've seen Stephanie Brown finally make it into the New 52. We, what we need to see is all those characters, those fan favorite characters like Wally West and all of those things, make an, an introduction into this post-convergence world the way that they should, the way that people want to see. They do a good job creating new characters like such as Bluebird in Batman Eternal and all of this. They, we we want to see, as comic book fans, all of our characters there. If your favorite character is Earth-3 Condiment King, then there's a book for you in this case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it looks like that's about all we have time for today, so I'd like to thank you for joining us and thank our sponsors, Excelsior Games and Comics, Dual Bus Design, and Sound G Entertainment, and I'll see you guys in the Nerdverse.